Well, hello there, friends. A recipe a lot of you have requested, a matzo ball soup. Well, not what you expect out of a French chef, but I used to make that in my restaurant for 21 years. People loved it. They are floaters, they are delicious, and the broth I made is absolutely exquisite. I know you're gonna love it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to ring the bell. Stay tuned, friends, we're making it together right now. Okay, friends, well, if you want to have a phenomenal matzo ball soup, you got to make a nice chicken stock. Now, you can buy a chicken broth, and for those of you that aren't going to buy a chicken broth, you can skip that whole thing I'm going to do right now and go to the next segment. But don't leave us. Stay with us. <laughs> we'll have a good time. So, friends, I got a whole chicken, uh, and I got some extra chicken wings. I like it. They give you a little, a little more uh, flavor to it. A little more collagen, it gives us more texture. So we put some chicken wings in there. There are eight, eight or nine of them. I got two big onions, got two big onions. And um, this is probably one of the very, very, very few times that we do not caramelize the onion. We want a chicken stock, the chicken broth kind of transparent a little bit. We don't need to caramelize the onion. The onions are there as a, a supplement, not like we don't want them to stand up. We really don't. So I got a whole chicken. Why do I get a whole chicken, friends? Because, you know, it's really the most reasonable way to make a, a chicken stock is to buy a whole chicken, okay? And all you want to do is really simple. You take your, your leg of chicken and boom, and, uh, and you cut them. Okay, now these guys, we're going to save for later, okay? We're going to save for later. I'll show you. All right, so we take the legs, you pull them, you cut a little bit in here, and then you flip it, and, and don't worry, you're not hurting him. He's dead already, okay? Take it right here. Don't worry about it, the whole thing in here. We don't need to cut up anything, but you know, when I make a chicken stock, I don't need to waste the, those beautiful breasts for the stock. So what I do is I remove the skin right there, right? Just yank the skin up. And I remove the breast. I don't need the breast to make the, to make the stock, okay? So... We cut the, 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 the breast off, really simple, okay? Remember, you keep your, your knife on the bone when you do this. Keep the knife on the bone, all right? So you get yourself two chicken breasts right there. Keep everything else in the chicken. You got two chicken breasts, you can do a nice chicken meal with it. This is really the best way to do it, friends. Now, of course, you can certainly buy a chicken stock, like I say, uh, and, 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 and it'll be okay, you know, and, uh, but if you really, really want to make it good, friends, you want to do what I'm doing now. Plus, <laughs> you got two free chicken breasts. <laughs> free chicken breasts, voila. So now what do we do with this? Cut it right in there, cut it in half, and voila. Pretty simple, okay? There's two beautiful chicken breasts that we're going to save for another dish. Put the skin in there. We save those. The leg, we save them for later. I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. And, uh, and, uh, and, and we're good. Okay, so now, let me just wash my hand real quick, and I'll show you the best. It's very simple, huh? You notice, friends? You know, I try not to do things that are too complicated, but, but I know a lot of you are going to want to make the stock. And, it, and it's not that complicated, eh? So, we have a couple of videos on how to make a roasted chicken stock. This is a little different, because this one, we're making it just for the matzo bowl soup. So we're going to be seasoning it. Normally when you make a chicken stock, just to make a chicken stock, you don't season it. No salt, no pepper, and your salt and pepper the dish you're going to use the stock in. Now this one, I know what I'm going to use it for. I'm making the matzo bowl soup, so I'm going to flavor it. 14 black peppercorn, uh, uh, whole black peppercorn. I didn't count them. I don't know how many. A few um, uh, uh, stems of uh, thyme, about uh, 12, <laughs> if you count them, it's a whole bulb, a bulb, bulb, whatever you call it, of garlic peeled. We got parsley leaves and the stem. We put the whole thing in there. Okay? Then we got some um, uh, uh, carrots pieces. You can see 
I used about five or six big carrots. I got to watch because I got chicken in here. Four or five uh, uh, carrots and the little pieces of it. I saved everything because for the actual soup that we're going to make later on, we're going to use that stock to make the soup. I'm going to have my little wheels that I make all the time. And then whatever little peels, or, not peels, but little pieces I had after I made my wheels, I put them in here. I don't waste nothing. If you can get them, a parsnip, if you can get them, great, put them in there, three parsnip. If you can't get them, then don't worry about them. This is about four or five whole pars uh, parsley, uh, celery uh, stems thing, the, the whole uh, branch. We'll save this for the soup. Well, now we're going to put salt. Now, you remember, if we make a regular stock, we don't put a salt. But here we're going to put salt, all right? It's very simple to do. And, uh, and fairly inexpensive, plus, you know, okay, so I paid eight fifty for the whole chicken. But look, I got two beautiful breasts. If I were to buy chicken breast, boneless and skinless, two big ones like that, it'd be about eight fifty. So I got two legs, two, two breasts, and I'm going to make a beautiful chicken soup. This is a no-brainer. And then I'm going to put some cold water on there, friends. And I'm going to put enough cold water to cover everything. That's it. And I don't know how much that is, but it was enough to cover the whole thing. Really simple. We're going to bring this to boil. We're going to cook it very slowly, about 45 minutes. I'm going to get set up because I'm going to make the butter, the mix for the matzo ball balls. <laughs> matzo ball balls <laughs> for the matzo balls. I'm going to make the mix, okay? So I'm going to bring this to boil, put it aside, get everything ready, and we'll make the balls together. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, friends, we're ready to make the mix for the bowls, okay? So we got uh, matzo meal, just plain matzo meal. I got five eggs. I'm going to beat them because I want the egg white to have air, but not too much where you separate them because if you separate them, uh, you make a meringue and, and it doesn't blend that well. All you got to do, friends, is uh, turn this on and beat them as much as you possibly can. Of course, you can do it with a whisk. But today I'm very tired. <laughs> so I think it would have went faster with a whisk. But I bought this thing a little while ago, I never used it. So I said today, hey, let me use the thing. The mixer. See, I got my eggs that I'm, I'm pumping some air. By doing this, I'm pumping a little air. If I do the meringue, it's too much air. And it falls. It doesn't stay with the matzo meal. This is enough. You see, look. We got a nice volume there, right? It's enough. All right. Enough. That means Jean-Pierre, stop. All right, here we go. Pull those guys out of here, and we're good. Let me take everything out of the way, friends, so I don't have it um, in the middle of it. All right? So then we put a, um, a half a cup of, uh, uh, you're supposed to put some chicken fat. Now, years ago, chicken fat was delicious. It really was delicious. Have you tested chicken fat lately? Not so good. It's going to be enough chicken fat in the soup. I don't need to add any more. Uh, so I am going to add a half a cup of clarified butter. Up to you. Use whatever you want, my friends. It's your balls. <laughs> Do whatever you want them. I like butter. So half a cup of clarified butter in the meal, in the, um, uh, the matzo meal. Mix that up. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now, some Passover menu do not allow you to put the, 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 the baking uh, powder, so don't put it in. It's really up to you. You have to check. You have to check with your, your Passover and how strict you want to be. It's really up to you. I think, I mean, I know as a matter of fact, it makes them nice. It gives them a nice... Um, uh, a fluffiness to it. Now, I see also a lot of people that use a garlic powder. Why use a garlic powder when you can use freshly chopped garlic? Huh? One tablespoon of freshly chopped garlic, one tablespoon of chopped dill, you're gonna get flavors, and also we're gonna put some fresh ginger. How much ginger are you gonna use? You're gonna use, now, a lot of you that now you're using the microplane correctly, I say, well, hold a minute here, you're putting the tool on top, that's because it's ginger. Ginger and chocolate and cheese, you do it that way. 
All right, friends. So a little bit of chopped ginger right there. You see, look, look, you can see how he does it. See, look, look, look. It's literally pureeing the ginger. All right, put uh, as much as you want. I put a little bit. I would say that's the equivalent of a two teaspoon if you were to measure. Hey, there you go, two teaspoon. Mix all this up, friends. And then we're gonna take all this and we're gonna mix it with our bowls, with our, uh, our eggs. <laughs> I got bowls in the, head, in the head today. We're gonna mix all this up, friends. Gonna mix it really, really good. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this rest, friends. Now you can make this a couple of days ahead. There'll be nothing wrong with it. You gotta let them rest. And matzo meal, matzo meal is going to get thick. This is gonna get nice and solid. You see, it's too liquid now. Give it 45 minutes, you'll see what happens, friends. Salt and pepper. You know what I find too often? We go we get the matzo meal, the matzo ball soup. Is, the, the, the balls are boring. Those are not gonna be boring, let me tell you. They're gonna be delicious, friends. All right? Mix it all up just like this. I'm gonna put a plastic wrap on top of it. I'm gonna put it in the fridge. And next time I see you, we're gonna make the balls. And then we're gonna cook them in a beautiful uh, a soup that we're gonna make. All right? I see you guys in a minute. When I, when I take it out of the fridge. See you later. Okay, friends, well, <laughs> let me tell you, check, check this out, check this out. Look at this, this is what we got here, friends. Beautiful chicken broth. This is delicious. Let me tell you, you guys are gonna like this. <laughs> this matzo ball soup you're gonna make is gonna be like nothing you've ever had. I promise you, friends. I used to make them at the restaurant. Now think about that, right? A French restaurant doing Passover. The first year, <laughs> I gotta tell you a funny story. Oh, mama mia. Here we are, 1976, I'm 24 years old. I had the restaurant only a few months because I bought it in July 26, 1976. Passover was right around the corner. And I remember uh, at a Passover day, uh, at 6 o'clock, normally we open the door by 6.30, the restaurant was full. And all of a sudden, 6.30, there's nobody in the restaurant. I go, guys, do you open up the door? Are the door open? Yes, chef, but it's Passover. Passover. I said, oh, I didn't know that. Anyway, to make a long story short, I went to the library here and said, man, I got to learn to make Passover food. And, uh, <laughs> hey, let me put some garlic in there and then I can talk, okay? Because, you know, Jack is keeping me busy over there. So, look, guys, one, two tablespoons of garlic, okay? A little garlic, a little onion. And then, so that I can relax, I'm going to put a little bit of that chicken broth right there. Right there, so then I can relax. So, I forgot where I was in my story. <laughs> I do this all the time, you know, I get in something. For but anyway, so I went to the library. I said, hey, I got to learn how to make uh, Passover food. So I learned how to make matzo brai and, 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 and uh, matzo bowl soup and gavelta fish. I make a delicious gavelta fish. So I learned how to make all this. And, uh, and Passover, we were booked a year in advance. People would come in and eat. We come in next year. We come in next year. It was great. And I had the restaurant for 22 years. We had the same people coming over here. For those of you that are watching right now, we had a great time, didn't we? It was great. So look, I got, um, uh, I got the onion. I got the garlic in here. And, uh, and so now what I, I got the, the, the broth, the, the, the chicken stock, if you will. Uh, and, and now we're going to make the soup. That's what you're going to eat. So it's got to be seasoned correctly. It's got to be flavored correctly. It's not just the stock anymore, okay? And uh, now, like I said, ooh, like I said at the beginning of the video, for those of you that are buying the store-bought chicken broth, it is, except this is homemade, except you... You decided because you didn't have the time or you, you didn't want to do it, then you use that. There's nothing wrong with it. So what do you do now? You got onion, you got garlic, you got carrots. You know, I cut the carrots. You know how to do it, right? Look, look, look. Uh, the carrots. Uh, Jack has got a link on the video where we can do this already. So I did it for the carrots. So they're pretty. You know, if you're going to put something in there, let make it look pretty. You know, I put a little more garlic in there. Put a little more pretty, right? And then celery. Look at like a beautiful celery. Very small, very small cut, because that's going to be in a bowl, so it's got to be nice. And then we're going to flavor it with a little dill, dill. And I chopped up, I got rid of the stems, a little bit of dill right there, right? This is really simple, friends. <laughs> Nothing to it, right? And, um, and then I got little sweet potatoes. I know they don't go normally in sweet potatoes, but look, look, see, you can buy sweet potato bowls. <laughs> no, you can't buy them. 
Look, I made them for you. You look, look, you see, very simple. You take a, a melon ball color, little guy, right? And you take it and you go deep. You got this, Jack, you got it? Not this, this is for the, this is for the carrots. And look, boom, you got a sweet potato ball. If, look, it's, if only if you have nothing else to do, okay? <laughs> a lot of you are looking and say, I got time to, I don't have time. Now, sweet potato are gonna cook faster, so I'm, I'm gonna put them toward the end. I'm not gonna put them now. All right, so now I'm gonna put more of this broth Right there, friends. I'm gonna put more of this broth. Right there. Right? And then I'm gonna put the chicken. Because the chicken is gonna cook the chicken pieces. The leg that I got earlier, I got the legs in there. I took some of that skin or that. A lot of skin had a lot of fat in there. Now, if you wanna keep the skin, you go ahead and do it. Right? So, look. That's it right there. And then I got the. So I cut the leg in half. All right? The legs and the thighs right there. Boom, boom. Put them in there. And I also took some of the tenderloin, the two tenderloin of the breast. But they're going to cook much faster than the legs, so I put them in the same time I put the sweet potatoes. I'll fix all that up in a recipe. And then toward the end, friends, we're going to also put some, um, some scallion. I put it at the end, okay? All right, so, so far, so good. You see nothing complicated. Let me wash my hands real quick. And then we're going to show you, I'm going to make the, the bowls. I'm going to make the matzo bowls. <laughs> That's the whole... <laughs> That's the whole thing, Jean-Pierre, don't forget to make the bowls. So now, you see a lot of people, they cook the bowls in water. Mamma mia, water, as we know, tastes like nothing. So you know what we do? We're going to put them here, the bowls, friends. We're going to cook them separately in here. You're going to say, why don't you put them in here? You could put them in here, but it's fragile. You know, you want to you wanna cook them gently, so you put beautiful broth right there. Remember, this is a gorgeous broth, right? So instead of cooking them in water, they're going to absorb the water. I don't understand people cooking anything in water. What is what it tastes like? As we know, nothing. So we don't want to cook things in nothing. <laughs> All right? The little okay over there, Jack, because I always put the little in the middle of this. Is. You put the little in the middle of everything. So look, guys. Uh, matzo ball. Matzo ball. So now look. You see, after an hour, an hour and a half, your, 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 your mix is hard, right? So now you take the bowls, right? And you don't want to make them big, an inch, an inch and a half, right? And then you, you take them and you roll them. And you got bowls. You see? We got bowls. <laughs> we do a lot of bowls thing. We do meat bowls. We do cabbage bowls. We do, um, what other bowls do we do, Jack? We do a bunch of bowls. Rice bowls. Yeah, the arancini, beautiful arancini. All right, for, look, I don't know how many bowls that's going to make me, friends, but what I'm going to do, okay, you don't want to make them too big because they're going to grow. They're going to double in size. And then what happened? Uh, if you cook them, if they're too big, then the outside of the bowls are going to be cooked, but not the inside, my friends. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them, right? And then, you see, your hands can get a little... A little so you know what, you can put a little bit of oil in your hands if you want, or a little water. i rather put oil, a little bit of oil, and then they don't get sticky for you. Let them set a little bit, and then you put them in the, in the um, let them set. I, I like them to be cold before I put them in, so I'm going to put them in the fridge for, for about five, ten minutes. Then I'm going to put them in the broth, and I'm going to turn it very low. I don't want it to boil. We don't want it to boil because we don't want the outside to cook over the inside. We don't want to cook at the same time. So we cook it very slowly. We'll put a cover on it gently. And when they're done, we're going to finish. The soup will be almost done by then. So we're going to take our time. We're going to make them. We're going to let them cool. In the meantime, this is cooking because this is going to take 45 minutes. And this is only going to take 30 minutes. So I got 15 minutes to get them cold. I'm going to make them right now. I'm going to make them cold. Now I cook them. All right, so I see you when it's all finished. We'll put it together. All right, see you in a minute, friends. Okay, friends, I just wanted to see. I wanted you to see. I just put them in. The minute I should have stopped filming earlier, but I did. The minute you put them in, within like a 30 seconds, they should come right up. They should be floaters, not sinkers. If they're sinkers, you know, they're going to be heavy. And, uh, and the fact that we whip the egg white, uh, together with the eggs, the whole thing, and the uh, baking soda and uh, baking powder also is helping. But remember, check with, uh, with if you want to be kosher correctly with Passover, you may have to check it uh, to make sure you can do it. So now, uh, they, they are very low heat. I'm going to cook them like that for about 25 minutes. I have this uh, uh, chicken 
a tenderloin that I could eat. I'm going to wait another 10 minutes to put them in. And my, uh, uh, my uh, uh, sweet potato bowls and my green onion, I'm also going to wait 15 minutes before it's ready. So I'll see you in 15 minutes, friends. Okay, friends. It's done. I got a little tapioca powder. Now you're going to say, what is that for? You know, you can certainly serve the soup like this, friends. It's too liquid for me. I like it better, a little thicker. So I take a little tapioca powder. You can get that at the store. You can use cornstarch. Cornstarch is a, a sometimes it depends uh, for Passover. Some people may not like it, so don't use it um, uh, for the, for that. But pas uh, tapioca uh, is perfectly fine. Is uh, any Passover will be fine. So you can put a little bit. You don't have to put tapioca powder in there. I like tapioca powder because it doesn't uh, interfere with the. Uh, 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 it, it stays nice and transparent. It preserves the pres uh, transparency of the soup. And, um, and it changes the texture a little bit so it's not as, as uh, liquid. And remember, the texture is a conductor of flavor. It's very important. If a soup is too liquid, it's like water, consistency-wise. It's very difficult. So the meatballs, the meatballs, the, <laughs> the uh, uh, matzo balls, are, uh, are cooked. They cook. It take about an hour. So what I do is I take a little bit of the uh, of the dark meat, friends, and uh, I'm just going to shred a couple of them, just to show you, right? And then I, I take the meat and I just uh, shred it. And uh, if it's cooked correctly, then it should just come right out, just like this, right? And then what we do is uh, you take a little bit of that meat, right there, friends. And, uh, and you put a little bit in your bowl or in everybody else's bowl, whichever, whatever you're serving, whatever you're serving, right? You got a little bit of a, a, a chicken there. And then you'll uh, you're take a, a couple of bowls of it, whichever one you want to put in there. You know, so they're not exactly all the same size. I think two, two per plate is fine. And then we're going to go in, friends, and... Uh, and now, like I said, you know, the texture is, uh, is up to you. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind a little thicker, too. I mean, I like it to where it's got a nice uh, a texture to it. And uh, you see? And uh, I think it just changed a little bit the texture, and it makes it much more enjoyable. But that's really a matter of opinion, friends, OK? And right there. Let me, I'm sorry, let me put the plate back. Because uh, I wish uh, Jack is always looking for a plate with a camera because I move it around. However much of all you want to give him, two, three, six, seventeen. It's up to you, friends. All right. And then what I like to do at the last minute is uh, sprinkle a little more fresh dill. And right there, friends, we have ourselves a beautiful matzo ball soup. I hope you like it. Let me get into it, friends. And a spoon is all we really need, right there. And uh, and they're beautiful. They've been in the, in the soup for about an hour, and uh, and they, 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 I don't want to take too much of it, but I think. Oh, it's very hot. So be careful. You may want to wait. Give them a few seconds, friend. Hmm. You see, the soup is, a, is a perfect for me as a consistency. I love it. Up to you, friends. I hope you make it. They're delicious. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching, friends.